What are some cheat codes you've found in the game of life? Several times in life I've cold called a company to confirm my interview time. I didn't have one prior to my call, but in their confusion and inability to even find my resume I've managed to secure an interview about 4 out of 5 times, twice I've gotten the job. When I was in my old 500 plus person building, I kept a stack of papers on my desk. When I was bored, or got tired of sitting down, I'd get up, grab my stack of papers and walk around. I called them my walking papers and did this for months. Got a lot of head nods and not one question the entire time. People always assumed I was on an important mission, but nope, not in the least. P.S. Worked on the executive floor wing, too. Niceness gets you everywhere. I get free shit from being nice. And no, it's not because I'm a cute girl, because I'm not. I'm an overweight, balding man. People respond to niceness. I've befriended the Comcast customer support person. I've befriended the most disliked, crotchety person in our office. I get special treatment at my cafeteria because I treat the service staff like actual human beings. I get fees waived because I ask nicely, be nice. It costs little and is worth a lot. If you have no complaints about your food service staff at a restaurant, ask to see the manager and pay a compliment and a thank you about the server host staff. Usually people want to see a manager to complain, and a compliment is nearly always welcome. I've gotten countless free drink ships percent off my bill, all for just making a polite comment to management. Edit. Thanks for the reddit gold, kind stranger. I went to see Busy P live at a festival, when it was his turn to perform he walked through the audience before going on stage. I reached out to try and get a selfie, but his security saw this as a huge no no and launched over to protect him on his way to the stage. This included the guard that was guarding the backstage entrance, they left the gate wide open. I glanced at my friend and we both smiled and nodded at the same time as we sneaked our way into the backstage. For some reason everyone backstage was extremely friendly, which I did not expect. Some guy saw us and noticed we weren't holding a drink and immediately served us two grey goose screwdrivers. Lots of food and booze, lots of friendly people, great view of the stage. The correct response to any compliment is thank you. You can then follow it up with a comment if you'd like to continue the conversation. If someone likes your dress, thank you. It has pockets if someone compliments your art, thank you. I've been practicing. If someone asks if you're a professional singer because you have a good singing voice, thank you. I just sing for fun. Not only does it make you seem confident and self-assured, it tells them that they are right. That's a friendly thing to do. This even works if you don't believe the compliment. Saying, oh, no, I'm ugly. When someone compliments your appearance not only tells them that they're wrong, it makes you think of yourself as ugly. A better answer would be, thank you. I really appreciate that and I don't always believe it, so hearing that from you helps. As an adult you can tell almost any kid who is running to stop running and they will. Yeah, really. Driving down a neighborhood street, kid is riding his bike exactly in the middle of the road, blocking all traffic. I carefully move all the way to the side to pass. Roll down window. Hey, can you stay to the side? You're going to get hit if you ride in the middle. Kid just gives me a smug grin and keeps riding down the middle. As I'm pulling away, I hear him scream slow down. Son of a lady yelled the one thing he knows makes me look bad to anyone who can hear. Still salty. You don't have to always give away the recipe. By that I mean, don't over explain yourself. If you can't do something, 910 times it's okay to simply say unfortunately I'm not able to do that, can't swing it this time, etc. You don't have to go on and on about why, or make up reasons and list them off. Over explaining just ends up looking more suspect than simply being clear and concise. When someone says something true, say you're right, not I know. It'll make them feel better and you've still shown everyone how awfully clever you are. And the opposite of that is the Socratic method. When someone says something you think is wrong, ask them questions to see why they believe. There's two possible outcomes. They end up explaining it via some contradiction or ridiculous assumption, and the belief probably was wrong. 
and getting them to explain it increases the chances they'll actually change their mind they actually do explain it, it makes sense, and I learn something new either way it's important to remember that a good definition of rational is trying to prove yourself wrong. If we want to make smart choices and have accurate beliefs we have to challenge ourselves and at least try to weed out all the wrong beliefs before they become dumb choices. Ask questions about everything. Ask people about themselves. Be open about stuff you don't understand and ask questions about that. When you forget someone's name, own up to it and just ask them. I am amazed at how many people won't acknowledge even a tiny amount of ignorance, or won't show honest curiosity about something, can't admit they've forgotten something they feel is important, and won't ever ask for help. Guys, your life becomes so much easier if you just drop the freaking ego and ask. The best advice I ever received was from my grandmother. I was a talkative child and would ask questions non-stop. When I apologized for asking so many one day she looked me straight in the eye and said never stop asking questions. Get a credit card like Amex Blue that has 3-6% cash back at groceries. Buy all your items at grocery store. I'll use Kroger as an example. You can buy normal groceries and gift cards. Amazon, Delta, H&M, McDonald's, whatever and get the cash back on that deal. Then, if you time it with their 4x fuel rewards, you can save $1 gallon off gas up to 35 gallons. Altogether, the math works out to being 12-15% off pretty much everything. Been doing this for years. I'll plan large purchases from Amazon or Home Depot around their 4x fuel points so I can get the gift cards. Edit. This also includes Kroger stores that operate under a different name. That is King Supers. I cannot overstate how much dressing well and being well groomed will impact your life. It'll drop the difficulty by 2 or 3 levels. No joke. People will treat you vastly differently. The opposite is also true. I did this but took it a step further, got my hideously misaligned teeth fixed, got braces as an adult, highly recommended if you never had it sorted as a kid, and holy shit did the money spent pay for itself in no time. Think about it, the less resistance there is to a person wanting to make eye contact with you, the longer and more in depth your engagements will be with those people, and the more confident you are in turn. This can lead to better jobs, promotions, etc. Edit. For those asking, I was 27. Got them off when I was 28. About 18 months total. Full train track style braces. Though I did pay a little extra for ceramic braces on the top row. They have a white appearance so are a little more camouflaged. No one really cared when I had them on. Other than the occasional person who would inquire because they were thinking about getting them too. Total cost about 6,000 Australian dollars. I'm 35 now, and yep I still look awesome. Moa edit. yeah probably should have mentioned it's more of a pay to win than a cheat code, but this actually does create a real sense of pride and accomplishment for the money spent. To seem charming, all you have to do a lot of the time is to be an engaged listener. You don't need an amazing sense of humor to be able to lay on the compliments or regale people with stories. Just listen to other people in a way that shows you are interested and not only waiting for your turn to talk. Make eye contact. Don't interrupt them. Don't turn the conversation to be about you. Ask good questions. Edit. I just want to add, as per many comments here, that being engaged listener is not the same as being a sort of conversational doormat where you have to allow people to drone on and on about things that don't interest you, annoy you, offend you, or drain you. Merely suffering through an encounter is pretty much the opposite of what I am talking about. It's about letting yourself be interested in and learn from other people and not focus so much on feeling like you have to be an entertainer. And being an engaged listener is really the opposite of the person who just listens and never wants to talk about themselves. You are putting yourself into the conversation with your interested responses. You are guiding it to places you find interesting. Just suffering through boring conversations is not engaged listening. Not always. I have a policy of being accountable for my role in any miscommunication or conflict. It's amazing how often that is taken as me being at fault rather than as me admitting my contribution to the issue. Dishonest or self-unaware people will frequently exonerate themselves completely the second someone else admits any wrong. Even if they were unequal, or often bigger, contributor to the problem. 
This goes doubly true in workplaces, where the perception will be that the person who admitted any wrongdoing was the guilty party. Those situations can paradoxically lead to the honest person, the person admitting their role, getting a bad reputation, not advocating against honesty and personal accountability, just saying it's important to be aware of the risks associated with it because these things will happen and it's less painful if you anticipate it as a possibility. I hope you enjoyed the video, I'm only 16 so I hope you didn't cringe from the editing, I hope we can get to 50,000 subscribers because I wouldn't be here without all of you, so thank you so much for your time and energy, and please subscribe.